I guess we are rolling. Hi, everyone. My name is Nitesh Turaga. I am a scientist in the Department of Data Science at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute of Harvard Medical School. And I'm also a member uh, of the Bioconductor Project, a core team member of the Bioconductor Project. Uh, today, I'll be talking about Bioconductor and Docker. Um, and how we deliver containerized open source genomic data analysis software. So before we begin, um, you guys can follow along my slides uh, at this link. It's bit.ly BioC Docker 2021. Uh, let me know if you have any issues accessing that link. Uh, it should be open to all. Let me start off with just introducing what is Bioconductor. Uh, I know this is a very different audience to ones I've presented to earlier. So just looking at the big picture, uh, Bioconductor is an open source genomics uh, software producing organization. We've been funded by the NHGRI for over 20 years now. So in this picture, there's like two triangles. Uh, there's a bigger triangle and there's like an inverted triangle in the middle. So on the bottom edge of this, um, you'll see basic genome biology, biotechnology, and high dimensional data science. So you have these data scientists at the right bottom vertex of the bigger triangle who are producing these machine learning methods, uh, data structures, and all these high dimensional data science methods to um, uh, so to take advantage of uh, all the assays which are being produced in the biotechnology industry. So the biotechnology industry produces your sequencing uh, platform, single cell methods, uh, DNA, RNA sequencing, different types of assays are being developed. And then you have uh, the basic genome biologists on the left-hand corner of this big picture triangle, Le a lower left-hand vertex. And what Bioconductor does is help biologists take advantage of these innovative assays produced by the biotech industry and also the high dimensional data scientists. So we produce software which does pre-processing analysis annotation of all of these assays so that um, we can help science move up uh, the two other edges of the uh, triangle. So as we move up the sides of the triangle, we have integrative genomics on the left-hand side and we have like population genetics and genomics on the right-hand side. And as we go to the apex, um, the goal is to uh, create an objective way for uh, scientists to think about open questions in biology and figure out therapeutics for diseases, or as we call it right now, personalized genomic medicine. So that's the big picture. Bioconductor produces software for analysis. So just to think about this a little bit more and introduce you guys to this a little bit more, uh, we are an open source organization. We produce open source software in the form of our packages. And all of these R packages are geared towards analysis of high throughput genomics data. So this includes your DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing, chip sequencing, so on and so forth. Um, and we at Bioconductor produce core infrastructure such as data structures, data models, annotations, and so on, so that researchers can analyze their data in a more structured manner. So this is the website, bioconductor.org. Feel free to check it out. Um, and if anyone's familiar with uh, the repository structures and you're familiar with R, so we're like CRAN, but geared towards genomics. So we recently had our release 3.14 in October of this year. It's the most recent stable release. Um, I don't see any chats. Um, there we go. Uh, we had our most recent stable release in October uh, 2021, 
and we now have over 2000 software packages. We also have experiment data packages. So when scientists produce uh, data from their experiments, they can put it in a package in R and publish it from Bioconductor. Um, similarly, we have annotation packages, which is the metadata for, um, for sequencing uh, data and so on. We have workflows and we have books as well. And the image on the right hand side of this is just showing you guys uh, the different packages we have and how we uh, view them in different um, different ways. Like you can uh, segregate them based on the biological question, infrastructure, the research field, the statistical method, and so on. So I'm going to talk about the impacts of uh, Bioconductor after we started using Docker. So our users are researchers, genomics researchers to be specific, who are doing valuable work to create therapeutics for diseases. Their time is incredibly valuable. So these researchers should spend more time doing science rather than figuring out infrastructure, dependencies, how to install things, so on and so forth. So we at Bioconductor use Docker to answer some of these questions and to help rapidly set up the users and let them do their analysis of their genomic data. So we went from a collection of uh, multiple software packages to a killer application or a platform. That's the goal. And our team has uh, bioinformaticians, statisticians, computational biologists, computer scientists, so that we can make all of this hard stuff easier for researchers. One of the biggest impacts uh, is that we were able to encapsulate all the dependencies and infrastructure which, which are needed for Bioconductor to work on an individual machine within a Docker image. So infrastructure and dependency management became extremely simple. So uh, Docker is cross-platform. So our users who use either a Windows machine, a Linux machine, or a Mac are able to use it as they want. Our packages have two sets of dependencies within their metadata. So they have a depend section, which essentially encapsulates all the other packages within Bioconductor or CRAN that this single package needs to work. And it also has system requirements. So this is software outside of R that your package needs. So something like Java, Fortran, something extra. So all of these are now encapsulated within the Docker image. So setting up your analysis environment is rapid now. Another advantage of our Docker images are they provide an extremely nice test environment. Um, so we have new packages which are being developed and being contributed by our research community to Bioconductor every six months. So our release cycle is every six months. And we get about 50 to 70 packages per release cycle. Um, and it's, it's steadily increasing over time. So when new packages are being developed, we would want users to make sure that uh, the packages being contributed are tested well, because this analysis uh, uh, again, is extremely important because it's biomedical science. So it provides a new test, envi uh, test environment for new packages, and it also helps us uh, maintain existing packages. So maintainers of existing packages get to improve functionality and add new features uh, using this test environment. And as always, software isn't perfect, so there's plenty of bug fixes which come along with uh, using, you know, Bioconductor usually, and maintainers get to fix their bugs using this test environment. Recently, as of one year ago, we started providing binary packages. So let me just tell you guys a little bit more about this. Um, so when you install a package in any platform, uh, either Python, R, whatever it is, that library or package takes time to compile on your local infrastructure. So 
now that we have a Docker image, we're able to give out uh, pre-compiled binary packages for our users. So we pre-compile all the packages on uh, the Docker image, the Docker container we produce, and we store it on uh, a, an object store on the cloud. And we're able to ship these binaries whenever someone needs it uh, within that Docker image. So this provides like a massive time saving. It, there's almost a seven to 10 X speed up um, while running analysis or workflows. We've tried benchmarking several packages. And uh, when you compare the source installation, which is compile everything on the local infrastructure versus a binary in installation, it's much faster when you use a binary package. Lately, we've also been able to deploy um, these containers on cloud uh, platforms. So as the size of the data keeps increasing for genomics, uh, we are not able to use local machines anymore. And we've had to like start using cloud systems and containers give us essentially the building blocks to go use cloud platforms efficiently. So we're able to deploy these Docker images on uh, products like the Google container engine very easily. And you can do this on Amazon and Azure as well, uh, just as easily. And since orchestrating systems have come out, uh, we're able to use Kubernetes uh, to harness the parallel computing facilities as well. So one of the main use cases of this is um, we're able to horizontally scale the number of pods and nodes we need. And the same kind of job is sent to each of these Docker images. So we're able to create an ad hoc cluster, a high performance compute cluster on the cloud as needed for users. And another massive impact um, that these Docker images have had is uh, we're able to standardize the analysis environment for education and all participants who attend our classes, workshops, or conferences, which are held multiple times over a year, are able to use these Docker images and get going without any setup issues. So this is like a major advantage as uh, participants, especially newcomers who are coming into the field, don't have to struggle to set up every single thing from scratch, installing R, installing the dependencies needed for like R, uh, system libraries and so on and so forth to get going with their analysis. I'm going to touch on like image design and availability a little bit since I've already impressed everyone with the impacts it had. So one of the main considerations while building the image uh, for us was all 2000 plus bioconductor packages work on this image. Uh, there should be no exceptions. So we built in the system requirements for each of the packages into this Docker image. We also wanted to make sure that the size of the image is fairly small. So it's around five gigabytes so that it enables rapid deployment. It comes with an R Studio front end so that there is some familiarity for our users with R Studio as a front end. We use the R Studio Community Edition, which comes with an open source license, and we're able to distribute. Um, this R Studio image, which we inherit, uh, comes from the Rocker project, which is also an open source project. I also want to highlight the ease of use of this uh, of this, these containers. So we're able to start up the bioconductor image fairly easily. It comes with a single command. Uh, you can just say Docker run, pass in an environment variable, which is the password for your R Studio instance. You have to map the ports of R Studio since it's a web application from the Docker image onto your local uh, machine. So 8787 is the port you want to uh, map onto both ends. And then you uh, use the organization bioconductor. 
and bioconductor docker is the name of the image here i am uh, deploying the development image of bioconductor and the tag is develop and you can see that our studio launches at this location localhost 8787 and you're able to work in r uh, fairly easily the point i guess the main point here is users do not have to work towards installing a bunch of complex software to get going with their analysis it's available on docker hub um, and the organization's name is bioconductor it's now supported by the uh, docker open source initiative so we have unlimited egress um, and we have um, multiple tags one for each release so every six months we have a release of Bioconductor with a bunch of new packages. So we have uh, all the way up to like release 3.9, I believe, um, which goes back almost three, or eight, three years or so. So um, each release is stable and it works with a set of packages which are available for that release. Um, it's also available on the Microsoft Container Registry uh, so the Microsoft genomics team, which is part of Microsoft research, hosts the emitter of the bioconductor images. Uh, you can see that it's a very Docker like view, but the image location is different. It's now, uh, the registry name is different. So you have to say Docker pull mcr.microsoft.com bioconductor Docker latest. So that's something to keep in mind. And these images have been adopted in a pretty widespread manner so far. Uh, we have seen adoption at scale in multiple other open source projects. If people are familiar with some of these, uh, I'll go through them anyway. So the Galaxy platform is a web application which provides interactive environments and they use the Bioconductor Docker images. Renku is a collaborative data science platform, which lets you do data science on all sorts of uh, data, including genomic data. And for their genomic data analysis with our studio, they use the Bioconductor Docker image. The Melbourne Bioinformatics Consortium has uh, the Genomics Virtual Lab, which also uses the Bioconductor Docker image for their anal analysis. So that is hosted on uh, the Australian public cloud, I believe. And more recently within the United States, we've had the Anvil project, uh, which is hosted completely on the Google cloud right now, but it's going to be available on uh, Azure as well, coming out pretty soon. So that went a lot faster than I expected. Um, since I expected some questions, but I don't seem to have any. But uh, so the bioconductor team has uh, a build system. Uh, so the build system essentially has like a Windows, a Mac, and a Linux machine servers, which build all of our packages every day, um, all 2000 plus packages every day to make sure that everything is building cleanly. So we've, we've had a few problems with this, like we're trying to explore like container solutions for all of the platforms. Um, and we're, we have a, a Docker based solution for the Linux uh, based build system right now. We're exploring Windows containers, um, but we have some questions regarding orchestration of Windows containers using Kubernetes and whether this is possible or not. I'm looking for some input from the community and um, this is the reason I've been attending like all the talks so far. I haven't heard anything about Windows containers so far though. And we also have the Mac platform and the biggest issue with this is um, there don't seem to be any container based solutions unless someone, st someone tells me otherwise. So I'm looking for any advice on this topic. And I also want to thank the Docker team. Thank you for the invitation to present. Thank you for making us a part of your open source initiative. And thank you for the great technology you have available. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, 
my email is nitesh at ds.dfci.harvard.edu. If you have any questions for Bioconductor, it's biocdevel at rproject.org. And I want to also give acknowledgments to the great Bioconductor team. I'll just click on this link to show you guys pictures of the team. So we have a smaller team, but they're all very good people. They're great, they're great engineers. Yeah. Thank you. I will stop live streaming now.